Well, this is when the manager went to get him, and uh, something was said by Littell, and then when Gabe came back into the dugout, he said, all right, young man, we got to have a chat. A chat they had. <laughs> Toy Kuiper on the call. Explain uh, NBC it, NBC Sports Bay Area. I will, Shasky. Let me get there. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody out there. No baby. We got John both the Giants. Even though he won a game yesterday, coming back off that road trip, 3-2 uh, to two against the Braves. Strider's really good for the Braves, but he picked up the loss. He's now 10-5. Alex Cobb, three straight starts. Going to at least seven innings, six hits, seven Ks. You can see him back next season with the Giants. But Zach Littell basically didn't like getting pulled out of that baseball game. Didn't like getting pulled after giving up three hits, two runs, and a walk, and his ERA ballooned to 508. And he asked some words for Gabe Kapler. And as soon as Gabe Kapler got back to the cl- uh, dugout, he asked some words for Latell, and they walked back to the clubhouse. Well, no, no, no. Uh, See, this is the part I want to explain. Strut. It was a strut. Kapler walked like he was the dad ready to put a <laughs> whooping on the kid from back in the day. Unbelievable. I have no idea what ended up happening, I, 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 but they went into the dugout or whatever, the tunnel, I the guess, tunnel, area. The tunnel right between the dugout and the clubhouse. Kapler looked ready. Uh, I mean, he looked uh, ready to, to hit the weights. Zach Latell, after giving up three hits and two runs and a walk. To do that, I mean, he had to be checked. He was there. the only person on the planet who thought he should have faced Matt Olson in that situation. Yeah. And it's like, dog, read the room. Oh, man. Giants, uh, they're nine games behind the Padres for that final wild card spot. Five games under 500. But we have to talk to our main man, Dave Fleming, of course, presented by the County of Santa Clara. Book a COVID 19 booster shot now at sccfreevax.org or call 211 Giants. They've won three in a row. Went two or three against the Cubbies over the weekend at Wrigley Field. Uh, that was a fun time in Chicago. Shasky, you got to go to Wrigley one day, man. It was surreal. But Flip, what's happening, man? Good morning. What a scene last night at Oracle Park. Well, you know this team is not uh, this team is not boring. They don't just win a game, <laughs> lose a game. It's it's winning streaks, it's losing streaks. It's uh, it's been such a strange season, but it was a really good game, and that was a very considering all the circumstances, how late they got in and how good the Braves are and how important that game is for Atlanta, uh, that was a good win for the Giants. That was a good win, and but everybody's talking about what happened there with Zach Littell and, of course, Gay Kapler late in the game. Littell gives up the two runs, the three hits, and a walk, and didn't seem like he was pleased with getting yanked. But he showed up the manager, and then you see Kapler just strutting there in a uh, dugout and follows Littell back into the tunnel, and they had a nice little chat. Break down the scene there for us, Flynn. What did you think of Littell kind of talking smack back to his manager there after getting yanked? Well, I mean, it was just so unusual. I Number one, because Zach Littell is like, I mean, he is like the world's nicest guy. <laughs> Zach is uh, very mild mannered off the field. I mean, he's a competitor. You have to be when you're out there. Uh, and also, I mean, it's undeniable he was getting knocked around. Like uh, there was no nuance or subtlety. Like I, there was no question about making the move. Uh, so I, I, I was just surprised that the move was made and uh, that, that that he had reacted to the move that was seemed so obvious. Uh, so anyway, I, I I mean, look, I'm always willing to give a guy a pass and chalk up something uh, to just, you know, the, the competitive juices were flowing. It was a weird scene. Zach would not be the guy, and we've never seen, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen Gabe Kapler do that before. I don't think, I, I, in his three years, I think that's the first time I've ever seen him react like that. Is it fair to question if this is more like discontent from the remaining guys on the team or just an isolated incident? Like, I'm not even sure what I should chalk this up to. Because even Bruce Bochy had an incident with Santiago Casilla in 2016. And then, like, immediately Santiago Casilla kind of like, hey, you know what? I was wrong. I forget Mm -hmm. exactly what the specifics of that one were. But I remember, uh, you know, him basically backing up. And Bochy had the three World Series championships as equity as well as just being a all-time good guy. So is this an isolated incident, you think, Flem? I think it is. I do. I do. Look, I think the bullpen is the place where you're most likely to have tension between a manager and parts of the mm-hmm. roster. You know, the bullpen is the spot where you, it's most easy for those players to be unhappy with how they're being used or being used too much. There's just so many different directions for those 
guys to be a little cranky. I'm being used too much. I'm not being used enough. I'm not facing the right kind of hitters, the right spots in the lineup. You're not using me in the right role. I mean, that's, you know, and so it's kind of natural that there might be some, but I just haven't, you know, I'm around these guys all the time, and I just haven't noticed any of that on on a scale of, of on any scale. I mean, I just haven't noticed players complaining. So uh, I think it was truly an isolated incident. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I didn't see Zach after the game. I didn't see Gabe after the game. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I I don't think I am. I think it was just a one time deal, and I I don't know why. I don't know what. I mean, really, truly, Zach is not. He's Zach's not clueless. Like I'm, I'm sure he realizes. Thinking back on it, the outing was set up for Alexander to come in, and he wasn't pitching well. And uh, so I, I, I bet he immediately regretted what he did. We're talking to Dave Fleming, the voice of the Giants. Of course, you catch him on NBC Sports Bay Area. Also, college football, golf, college hoops. You name it, Flem is everywhere. I'm um, talking a little Giants baseball as they won three in a row, beat the Cubs two out of three. And of course, the Braves last night. In the- very tough pitcher, Strider, because Alex Cobb dealt last night. Seven innings, six hits, didn't give up a run, seven Ks in two of his last three starts. Uh, he's been really, really good. He had to hiccup against the Dodgers back on September the 7th, but against the Phillies, pitched really well. This is a guy where I think you've talked about all season long, Flynn, where the Giants feel like they could find guys like this and add them to the rotation. It looks like Cobb could be a candidate to be back in the rotation next season. Oh, he's definitely going to be back in it. He definitely is. He's a uh, Alex is uh, he has had a really really good year. Uh, you know, to me, he's a big bright spot. Um, you know, early in the year when we were talking about him, we were saying ah, the numbers don't match the performance, and that's too bad because he's pitched a lot better than the numbers would indicate. But uh, I would say now the numbers pretty much match. I mean, the numbers look pretty darn good, other than the fact that he doesn't have a lot of wins personally. Uh, he's had a terrific year, and uh, somehow we were also always saying, ah, except for the Dodgers. I mean, that's true for, like, every Giants pitcher. Ah, except for the Dodgers, he's pitched really well. Uh, they do <laughs> have to figure that out. they got to yeah. solve that problem, um, but so does everybody else. Uh, and uh, so, anyway, I, Alex, that was one of his best outings of the year. The Braves are legit good. And uh, I'm I'm happy for him because I think it was grinding on him early in the year. The Giants just didn't play good defense behind yeah. him, yeah. and uh, it kind of ruined his performance. And now they're playing good defense, and he's pitching great. Yeah, he's looked really, really good uh, the last few outings, and I'm I'm really excited for him. We all want to see Rodon come back, but they did give a two-year extension to Wilmer Flores. I feel like he's been this year's everyday lineup MVP, and I don't think moving forward they want him to be an everyday player. Um, most Giants fans like myself, we're looking for any code or anything that could signify what the offseason might bring about. Do you think the Wilmer Flores um, signing has anything to do with their future intentions on Longoria or Crawford moving positions? Or, or Jock. Any- or anything like it, or is this just hey we want to bring back Wilmer at a good price? Uh, I think it's probably the latter. Um, again, yesterday was a weird day just because uh, everybody was in a coma, so I didn't. You know, it's not like I was bouncing around talking to everybody before the game. Like, oh yeah, that's, uh, uh, how about that deal and what does that mean? I, I just you know everybody was just kind of uh, in survival mode. So maybe today I'll get a chance to to get a better answer for your question. But I think, you know, you rattled off those names there. Longoria is the interesting one. Mm-hmm. When you bring back Wilmer, uh, does that mean that, you know, because, I look, I, here's the thing about Wilmer. We all love him. I'm thrilled he's coming back. He's been a huge part of this team for three years. Uh, he's still young. He's still got a lot of good baseball left. That's a no-brainer deal to me. Like, I, I'm, I'm, with I'm you. thrilled he's coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Giants have also said we need to get more athletic. We need to get better defensively. Right. And if you bring back the same team next year, you're not really accomplishing that. So I, I do think they still intend to do that, and that's where it's a fair question to wonder, okay, they've picked Wilmer. They've circled him. Uh, you know, they've made their intentions clear about Jock. Whether that happens or not, we'll see. Right. But that's they, They've been clear about that. Uh, I think that's a it's a looming question about okay how many more of those kind of players can you fit on this team for next year? So so Brinson more athletic, 
Let's see what he can do. He didn't play yesterday. Basically, he had to one at bat, pinch hit, play center field. We saw Calhoun, a longtime prospect with the Dodgers, got traded to Texas, made his debut yesterday. And then Joey Bart, who, look, had a big, big home run Saturday afternoon at Wrigley Field. It was really cool to see. Let's see some of the young guys play because what you're talking about, Flem, that looks like they'll, Brenton is an athletic guy. Calhoun will see about. Bart will see about. Maybe they'll get more at bats and we can see more of them and maybe drop down way to Yastrzemski in the lineup here because, Flem, you're talking about it. you got to get more athletic. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and, and the guys, you know, Wade and Yaz, uh, it's just reality. They just have not, they have not performed. Uh, they just haven't. Um, and they're not the only ones. So, you know, there's a combination of needing to get younger and more athletic and also just needing to get better performance and trying to evaluate or judge whether, okay, has this been a fluke thing these last few months or... Uh, do we need to make some longer-term judgments about some of these players? Mm-hmm. Uh, David VR put him on the list. I mean, he's been a real bright spot the last few weeks. You give him some at-bats down the stretch, see what he can do. Uh, and, and Bart is for sure in that mix. I mean, right. Joey has. I, I think Joey's made the strong case uh, uh, that he's a big part of this team going forward. Calhoun, Brinson, you know, those guys are getting a chance. And, right. Let's and see it. Let's see it, right, Flynn? What's there to lose? That's it. See it. And if they play great, uh, they come to camp with a chance to win a job, great. If they don't, right. then you didn't lose anything. So no, I think no. you're right about that part of these last few weeks of the year. Where are you at this weekend, Flynn? College football. We didn't ask you where you were at last weekend. Uh, where'd you go? And then where are you at this weekend? Well, I was in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oh. Uh, I had Arizona State, Oklahoma oh. State last weekend. Um, and ASU hung in there for a while, but just not quite good enough this year, I don't think. Uh, so this week I'm going to Utah. Um, oh. And on paper before the year, we thought it was going to be a, a good game. San Diego State, Utah. San Diego State beat them last year, but San Diego State has not started the year very well. And I think Utah will probably win uh, handily, but Utah's a good team, so we'll see the Utes for the first time this year. It's a quick flight. It's a little easier than <laughs> Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Stillwater, Oklahoma. <laughs> San Diego State got thrashed by Arizona that first game in their new stadium down there, San Diego. Flynn, you are the best as always, man. Giants, three in a row. What do you know? What do you know? Three in a row. They'll take out the Braves again tonight at Oracle Park. Flynn, we'll talk to you next Tuesday. I mean, it was such a, you know, the Niners game was a bit of a oh. downer, so, oh I, you know, it's it's I, nice that the Giants are winning a few games. If I was out there in Chicago, man, the Giants were the bright spot Saturday afternoon at Wrigley Field. And let me tell you, first time at Wrigley Field, what a cool spot. Little ball, little oh. yard, walking down Sheffield Avenue, Waveland Avenue. Try to get Chasky out there. Maybe we'll get him out there to Chicago next year. But a really cool experience. And in Soldier Field, of course, the weather just flipped. Just flipped. And it was a monsoon. So watching the Niners lose in person and hit walking in that monsoon for 45 minutes, not a fun Sunday for you, boy. Joe, you've never been to Wrigley? No, I've been to Fenway. I've never been to Wrigley. It's I just we just couldn't afford it this summer. Well, that I, I'm not blaming you for that. <laughs> we got to get you there. Yes, yeah, no, I, no, know, I know. I know. I'm going to the game Friday night, though. Big crowd going with us Friday night. I'll be at the Dodger Giants game Friday night. Oh, I'm sure you'll be on your best behavior. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> not committing to that one, Flip. Not committing <laughs> to that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you there. I'll say hi. All right, see you guys. All right, Flem. Dave Flemmy, the one and only Dave Flemmy, presented by the County of Santa Clara Booking. COVID-19 booster shot now at sccfreevax.org or call 211. Real quick, I want to hear from Kaplan.